Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the iFlight XL10 V6 6S 10 inch quadcopter. As you can see this quadcopter can barely fit on my desk and in this quick video I'm going to go over its features and specs, see how long and how far it can go using this iFlight Full Send LR 8000mAh 6S 2P lithium ion battery pack and give you my feedback after testing it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside this pretty big white box you can find the quadcopter which comes pre-assembled and pre-tuned and is available with multiple radio receiver options. 4 HQ Prop 10 by 4.5 macro quad propellers. These propellers are pretty expensive and also quite fragile, so you better buy at least two more sets. In addition, you're also getting two iFlight branded 30 cm long battery velcro straps, a 15 cm long RHCP antenna, which is using an SMA antenna connector, an XT60 to XT90 battery adapter, a hex key driver, and an action camera mount, which I've already assembled on the drone, some extra screws, stickers, and user manuals including instructions of how to set the GPS rescue mode as out of the box it is not configured. In terms of features and specs, the XL10 V6 features the iFlight Zing 2 3110 900kV motors which I've previously reviewed and bench tested. At least at the moment of shooting this video, only an analog version is available and it features the iFlight Blitzwoop 1.6 watts VTX and an unknown analog FPV camera. In addition, this quadcopter features an anti-spark filter, an iFlight Blitz stack, which is based on an F7 flight controller and a 55A BL-32 in one ESC. Over here you can find a pretty loud buzzer with a dedicated cutout on the bottom of the frame a couple of capacitors are pre-soldered to the battery leads and it is using 12 gauge silicon coated wires which are connected to the XT60 battery connector on the back side of the drone. Under the battery connector you can find the SMA antenna connector for the VTX antenna and since this is a long range oriented quadcopter it comes pre-equipped with the iFlight M10 Blitz GPS unit which is located inside this foldable mount which also holds the antenna of the radio receiver. As for the frame, it features 7mm thick interchangeable and replaceable carbon fiber arms. The width is 15mm and they support motors with a mounting pattern of 19 by 19mm. The thickness of the top and bottom carbon fiber plates is 3mm and the distance between them on the back side of the quadcopter is 29 mm and on the center 19.2 mm. It is using aluminum side plates, comes with silicone pads for the FPV camera and supports 19 by 19 mm micro-sized FPV cameras. On the center of the frame you can only find 30.5 by 30.5 mm mounting holes for the stack and on the back side of the frame you can find 30.5, 25.5 and 20 by 20 mm mounting holes for mounting your VTX. As for its weight, without propellers the XL10 weighs about 752 grams. The weight of 4 propellers is about 98 grams. The two battery velcro straps weigh 11.3 grams. This 8000 mAh 6S2P lithium ion battery pack weighs about 892 grams so this is basically a sub 2500 grams setup 
as the total weight of this quadcopter, including the pretty massive lithium ion battery pack, a set of prop, and the two battery vehicle straps, is 1753.3 grams. As for setting it up, here you can see a quick overview of the out of the box beta flight settings that the XL10 comes with. As I've mentioned earlier, you will need to set up the GPS rescue mode by yourself. And the most important thing is that the quadcopter comes pre-tuned. And this is actually one of the best things, in my opinion, about iFlight. They make sure to pre-tune their quadcopters. And in case you've ever built a quadcopter bigger than 5 inch, you probably know that the hardest task is to tune it. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the iFlight XL10 V6. I was able to cover a total distance of more than 23 kilometers in about 18 minutes using this big lithium ion battery pack, which I think is quite impressive. What I didn't like about this quadcopter is that the VTX and camera didn't perform quite well. I actually went ahead and measured the output power of the VTX and I didn't find any issues as its maximum output power is over 2.5 watts, so there is no problem with that, but the combination of the two didn't work well, and I also noticed some problems when the throttle was over 50%. So I think that the best option would be to replace the VTX and camera unit with an O3 setup, and remember that in case you're going to buy the setup and replace the analog one with a digital one, you will need to get a 20 cm long coaxial cable for the camera unit. In addition, in terms of performance, I've only tested the iFlight XL10 V6 using this big lithium ion battery pack, so in case you would like to get the most out of it, you will need to use it with a normal LiPo battery. Probably a 5000 mAh 6S LiPo battery is going to work well. These are quite powerful and efficient motors, and they could handle the weight of this setup, even including the Insta360 X3 360 degrees camera with no problems. In addition, this setup is quite quiet, as you are about to see in the flight footage. So overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that this quadcopter definitely flies well, and I am probably going to change the analog setup to a digital one. Whether you should get it or not, it is pretty much up to you and your budget. And remember that besides buying the quadcopter itself, you will need to buy quite expensive batteries, so you will need to budget yourself accordingly. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with the long range flight. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. I wish you all happy flying and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.